Teen idol Yuka Kuzuki performs a massive concert in front of thousands of fans. The song she sings is a bit of a downer, where she confesses her jealousy of kids her age with normal lives. As the song ends, Yuka shocks her fans with news that leaves them stunned. Mid-concert, Yuka publicly introduces her boyfriend, just an average Joe, who comes on stage and kisses her. Suddenly, the guy, named Kosaku Hada, wakes up, revealing it was all a dream, and he's a huge fan of the gorgeous Yuka. Kosaku starts his day as a student at Tamo Agricultural School and, along with his buddies, gets down to working the land. He shares with his friends his dream of moving to Tokyo to start a modern farm. However, his friends, not exactly big dreamers, tell him he should set his sights lower, marry someone from the village, and live a calm life away from the ups and downs. Right after they say this, chaos erupts as a runaway cow escapes, causing havoc. The cow heads for the crops, and the youths try to stop her. One student, Kakazaki, attempts to use his fighting skills to no avail. One of Kosaka's female classmates distracts the cow with her red clothing, leading the cow to chase our protagonist until it tires out. Later, in class, Kosaka chats with his two best friends, Kei and Minori. We learn that there's a bit of a feud at the school, as the livestock specialty students don't get along with those in agriculture, especially with Kocho Yoshida, who switches from a tough personality to a shy girl whenever she talks to Kei. Later on, while studying with his friends, Kosaku hears a news report on TV that crushes him, Yuka has quit her idle career and plans to retire immediately. Kosaku falls into a depressive state, curling up in a Yuka-shaped pillowcase, while he tells his friends that he always anonymously sent fruits and vegetables to Yuka, hoping she'd enjoy the produce from his village. After Minori and Kei point out that sending eggplants anonymously to an idol might not be the best idea, our hero gathers his energy and heads back to class. Back in class, their teacher, Natsumi Becky, a quirky woman known for her mood swings and the ability to spin hilarious stories only to end them with comments that depress everyone, announces that a new student has joined the class. Everyone is struck by the new girl's beauty, named Ringo Kinoshida, but to Kosaku, she looks eerily familiar. Kosaku and his friends chat with their teacher, who confirms that, indeed, Ringo is Yuka, who has decided to attend school anonymously to live a normal life as a regular student. The teacher assigns the group to give her a school tour, now that Ringo will be part of their group and living in the same dorms as them, which thrills Kosaku. Kosaku shows Ringo around the school and introduces her to his childhood friend Minori Nakazawa, his best buddy Kei Kamatori, and his pet Wakadana, a wallaby, basically a mini kangaroo that's not really considered a kangaroo, so it's something of a cross between a kangaroo and a rat. Ringo listens to Kosaku's lessons but doesn't seem too impressed, especially when our hero starts using fancy words to dazzle her. Later, the group visits their classmate Kochi Yoshida, who, on behalf of the livestock group, gifts Ringo a basket of eggs, sparking a debate over fertilized versus unfertilized eggs. Ringo, unsure of the difference, asks her new friends, which leads to an awkward lesson on reproduction and fertility by their teacher. After the tour, the group throws a welcome party for Ringo in their dorms, ending up playing a game where one of them, chosen as the king by picking a stick, commands an action of one of the numbered subjects, without knowing who is who, that must be obeyed. However, whenever Kosaku is king, he issues specific orders to Ringo, but Minori gives him the wrong numbers, so, unbeknownst to him, he's actually commanding her. Despite the fun, Ringo seems oddly jealous of Minori's closeness to Kosaku since, accidentally, all the commands Kosaku gives Midori are somewhat risque, leading the two into compromising positions to Ringo's dismay. Finally, Ringo gets to be the king and orders Kosaku to call her by her name, without any titles, which is quite forward. The next day, our hero wakes up thinking it was all a dream, until he runs into his new classmate in the dorm laundry. Ringo, not knowing much about life, doesn't know how to wash her clothes, but Kosaku offers his help, leading to a series of mishaps when Minori also shows up while Kosaku is offering to wash Ringo's underwear, to which she doesn't seem to mind the offer. This situation turns into an underwear contest, with even Kei involved, forcing our hero to choose his favorite underwear and why. After the contest, the group is excited and proposes making an underwear festival until Ringo tells them it's a stupid idea and leaves. 
Kosaku is bummed out to find that Minori has tossed all his Yuka Kuzakabe merch, even his favorite pillow. When he confronts her, she tells him she had everything burned because if Ringo found all that in his room, she'd freak out, so she did it for his own good. Kosaka gets it, though he's not thrilled, but Minori also says she's not a fan of Ringo, seeing her as one of those big city girls who come to small towns to mock the farmers and flaunt their city ways. Kosaka realizes his childhood friend and his favorite idol are clashing over him, but he fails to see the funny side. It's Ringo's first farm day with the other students, and Minori is determined not to be outdone by a former city idol. Ringo shows up in a work uniform recommended by Minori, but Kosaku notices it's actually a fantasy armor that leaves little to the imagination. Kosaku complains that Minori tricked Ringo, but then Minori reveals her own armor, putting them on equal footing. The first task is to check the crops for parasites. Kay notices the chosen plants are full of thorns, which should trouble Ringo more than Minori since Minori's used to it. However, Ringo manages just fine and even handles the parasite-infested leaves without a hitch, winning the first round with her pure heart that doesn't find worms disgusting. The second challenge takes place in the school's chicken coop, where the girls must deal with the smell and cockroach invasion. Ringo, unfazed, wins again. Finally, Minori challenges Ringo to the toughest of all farming tasks, the rice field. The next day, the students gather at the rice field, and after a lengthy debate over proper attire and swimsuits, Kosaka gives Ringo a crash course on rice planting, making Minori jealous. The teacher gives Ringo a head start as a beginner, but Minori quickly catches up due to her experience. The competition is fierce until Ringo accidentally pushes Minori into the water, prompting Minori to retaliate. The girls end up wrestling in the mud, dragging all their classmates in with them. By the end of the day, everyone is covered in mud, and the two women decide to become friends. It's been quite some time since Ringo arrived at the school, and one morning, Kosaka realizes he's never seen her smile. However, a more pressing issue interrupts our heroes' lives, as someone has been stealing fruits and vegetables from the fields. Kocho has seen the thief in action at night and pressures the rest of the students to catch him before he destroys the fields completely. After Kocho describes the supposed thief, the group deduces it might be a stray monkey feeding on the vegetables at night. Under Kay's leadership, the group holds an emergency meeting to plan how to deal with the thief. Minori suggests enclosing the fields with an electric fence, but there's no budget. Ringo proposes feeding it so it won't steal the crops, but Kay points out the monkey also destroys other plants, so it's not acting out of hunger but for fun. Kosaku suggests using a fireworks machine gun to scare off the monkey, but the rest of the group rejects the idea when the rockets accidentally fire off in the classroom. Kocho suggests talking to the monkey, arguing that humans and monkeys are nearly the same, but the group dismisses the idea before she can elaborate. Kay decides to take drastic measures and invites a friend of his, an expert in blowgun art, who, despite his odd tastes, is capable of capturing the monkey at night. With the monkey captured, the youngsters realize the creature has an injured arm, which might be why it was abandoned by its family. Ringo worries for the monkey's life now that it's captured, and Kosaku responds that the priority is the crops. However, Kocho had already planned everything and had spoken with a friend who works at the zoo, so they will send the monkey there to live peacefully among other monkeys. Everyone celebrates, and Kosaku observes Ringo, who continues with her expressionless face. A misunderstanding causes an embarrassing situation in Minori's room as Kosaku goes to her room, and she thinks he has other intentions, when he actually just wants to talk about Ringo and has also invited Kei to the meeting. Kosaku is concerned that Ringo hasn't smiled once since she arrived at the school, and several attempts are made to remedy this, Kei tries telling her jokes, Minori tries to tickle her, and eventually, she reveals that she somehow can't smile, a problem she's had since her modeling days. The next day, the group decides to show Ringo their special project. They arrive at a planted area where the land is dead due to human abuse, planting without considering how much it costs the land to bear fruit. Kosaku explains to Ringo that the school gave them this area to experiment and see if life can make its way back. Slowly but surely, the group has been working the land and has managed to grow some tomatoes, which have grown with much effort, and they hope to do the same for the entire field soon. Astonished by the significance of our hero's work, 
Ringo asks to taste a tomato, and Kosaka notices that when she does, a smile forms on her face. The new class assignment is to make the most of the soil, and the group decides it's time to plant some soybeans. Minori is preparing dinner but realizes they're out of miso, so someone has to fetch some from the biotechnology class domain, also known as class B. Ringo doesn't see the problem, but Kosaka tells her he dislikes dealing with the group members because they always seem to look down on him. K feels the same, but Minori sends them on a miso mission anyway. Reluctantly, the two go, and Ringo tags along to meet the mysterious students. They first encounter Akari Bio Suzuku, the class representative of the biotechnology department obsessed with Yaoi. She cheerfully hands over the miso they need but asks for a favor in return, to test a new yogurt strain with the worst name imaginable. Given the miso favor, our heroes have no choice but to comply with the odd request, which gets weirder when it involves water guns filled with yogurt and video cameras. Grateful, Akari bids the group farewell but warns Kosaku to be careful since the F group and its leader, another member of the student roundtable, are looking for him. This terrifies Kosaku, who hides in the forest. Minori and Ringo go looking for him, and he reveals that the F group is the school's toughest group, whose aim is to fight everyone, and now they've decided to challenge him. Kosaku also reveals that the F group is comprised of lumberjacks, and before we wonder why he thought a forest was a good place to hide from lumberjacks, the F group descends from the trees. Rintaro Woodman Miyamoto, the leader of Team F, challenges Kosaku, jealous that he's always surrounded by beautiful women like Minori and Ringo and considers him just an ordinary guy. Rintaro even accuses Kosaku of bathing with Ringo, but he says that was only until second year, which infuriates Ringo as his clarification only makes things murkier. Finally, Rintaro decides the best way to attract women is to make the lumberjack class more inclusive and invites the girls to join them. Kosaku, watching from afar, isn't surprised by Rintaro's defeat, as women have always been his weak spot. Later, as Ringo checks her soybean fields, a strange boy kidnaps her. When Kosaku realizes Ringo hasn't gone to the library, he goes looking for her and, Failing to find her, deduces she's been kidnapped by Keiru Rose Hanazono, the effeminately charming class representative of the landscaping department. Kosaku confronts him, but Ringo says Keiru didn't kidnap her, he just offered her sweets. Tired of Keiru's antics since he tried the same with Minori the previous year, Kosaku challenges him to leave Ringo alone. Keiru accepts and challenges Kosaku to a game where they bite on opposite ends of an edible stick, and the one who pulls away to avoid a kiss loses. Kosaku realizes Keiru won't back down and that if they continue, his first kiss will be with him, unsure of what to do. Kei comes to the rescue, but Keiru schemes and steals our hero's first kiss in front of the rest of the student roundtable who are watching. While Kosaku mourns his first kiss, Ringo wonders, if they'd now met three of the four members of the student roundtable, where could the fourth one be? A food company's sales have skyrocketed by featuring a cute girl on their packaging and ads, so Kosaku and his friends realize they could sell more products by using pretty girls in their advertising. Enter the money-making student, Tereo Money Kanagami. Kanagami, the fourth member of the roundtable, though there are actually five, for some reason, just back from a suspension for misusing school funds, offers our heroes a deal, use a new mascot to boost their product sales. Kosaka refuses, knowing Kanagami's reputation, but she entices them with the collaboration of a famous manga artist, making the offer more appealing. Kanagami convinces Kocho to sell her eggs, and though she's wary of Kanagami's motives, she agrees when the ambitious young woman explains it's about more than money, it's about showing the world their humane treatment of chickens by selling the country's best eggs. Soon, they're swamped with egg orders to the point the order page crashes, and the students have to take calls and orders, much to Coach O's delight. At a meeting, a new mascot design is unveiled, not the expected cute girl but a sexy woman. The group initially worries, but Kanagami reassures them that the mascot doesn't matter as much as the product itself. The group agrees, but K starts to get suspicious. He tells Kosaku he's leading the group for now, not trusting Kanagami, and dramatically exits on a goat, yes, you heard right. Kanagami meets with Kosaku to say it's time to move on from the egg business since a local company wants the brand rights and the school is considering giving it to them to support small businesses. Plus, as students, 
they'd never see any egg sale profits if they belonged to the school. Kosaku is surprised to find that Kanagami isn't driven by profit but by the thrill of the chase. With eggs behind them, Kanagami plans her next venture, this time roping in Suzuku to create a mushroom strain shaped like, let's say, more adult things. Suzuku agrees, and they get Rintaro's help with this new business. Unfortunately, this violates school rules, and success quickly leads to class suspensions. For Kanagami, the fun was all that mattered. The heat wave hits the school, and though Ringo worries about her soy crops, Kosaku and Kei assure her that soy is very heat resistant, so there's nothing to worry about. Later, a sudden excess in vegetable production leads the group to overeat, alarmingly gaining weight. Kosaku and Kei notice their weight gain and not too delicately inform the girls they've also put on significant weight. After everyone diets and things return to normal, Ringdo, concerned, shows Kosaku a white substance on her soy plants. Kosaku and Kei investigate, thinking it's nothing, but alarmingly call a professor after examining a soy stalk. Turns out, Ringo's soy suffers from southern blight, which will inevitably kill the plants and, worse, could infect the soil if not dealt with by burning the affected crop. That night, Ringo locks herself in her room, and Kosaku, from the other side of the door, explains that farming life is like this, things don't always go as planned, and the pay isn't great either. Then, Kei talks to Kosaku, feeling guilty for choosing the soy for Ringo to plant since it's very resistant and supposed to be easy, thinking it would make her proud when harvested, but now that's not going to happen. Later, heavy rains almost ruin this year's tomato harvest following the drought. The students gather to collect the tomatoes, which have dried out but will now absorb all the water they can, potentially bursting. Fortunately, the students organize and manage to save the harvest. After the rain stops, Ringo tells Kosaku she came to the school because of the vegetables he sent her. Kosaku asks how she knew it was him, given the anonymous nature of the delivery, and she says that's not true, they wouldn't have served them otherwise, and each basket came with a letter from him. Kosaku and Ringo confront Minori, who admits she wrote the letters, thinking it looked bad to send vegetables anonymously, so she always included a letter pretending to be Kosaku. Kosaka thanks her, and Ringo declares her affection and friendship for Minori. The day ends and Kosaka records the relevant events of the day in his diary and it seems to have been ordinary except for one or two curious events. That morning, as the boys check on the crops, a dark shadow invades the school. The shadow is actually 40-year-old teacher Natsumi Becky is tired of being single and embarks on a bout of lust against the crops and students alike, but is soon thwarted by the intervention of Kei and his faithful goat, which is apparently something Kei identifies with. Then, among the boys, a great debate arises, are big breasts better than small breasts? Later, Becky's problem has not been solved, and she and Kosaku and Ringo come up with a cooking program for the class. Becky, jealous of Ringo's beauty and youth, takes every opportunity to emphasize the young girl's flat chest and repeatedly harasses Kosaku. The students do not understand how she is able to harass everyone and not pay the consequences, and Becky confesses that the school allows her to do whatever she wants since she is the daughter of a prominent politician. The day ends without any other surprises, and the teacher gives a musical show in a local square. Minori has never been to the beach, and all her friends rally to take her there. Kosaku, especially, gets overly excited, thinking it's the perfect chance to see Ringo in a swimsuit. However, Mother Nature has other plans, as a typhoon hits the area. Minori refuses to accept the situation and is in complete denial, insisting on going to the beach at any cost, but her friends try to explain that it's not going to happen. Suddenly, Kanagami shows up, having come to school for a meeting only to find it cancelled due to the bad weather, meaning she'll have to hang out with our heroes. The fields flood, and one of the guys remarks that the land looks like the ocean, which snaps something in Minori. She loses all touch with reality and starts swimming in the mud in the middle of the storm. Kosaka goes to rescue her but, seeing the joy of his friend playing in the mud, he too jumps in, followed by their friends. The group ends up having beach-like fun in the schoolyard, doing stuff like grilling, playing volleyball, and even squabbling with the school's beach sports club, which is a surprise to everyone since there's no beach nearby for such activities. However, the fun halts when Kanagami informs them that the storm is threatening the school's rice crops. 
The group appoints Kosaku to lead the rice plant rescue, and he manages to organize his friends to save the crop. But, the safety ropes are too short because Kanagami had convinced the school to plant a different rice type, presumed to sell better, which is now at risk of being destroyed by the storm. Kosaku comes up with an idea and uses a school bus to block the wind, risking suspension for unauthorized use of a school vehicle. Ringo supports him, telling him she'll be with him no matter what, and helps him drive, sitting on his lap and steering them through the storm. Finally, with the rice crops safe, the storm subsides. Kosaku isn't suspended, and as a reward for saving the rice, the bus driver takes the group to the beach at last. But the joy ends there when Kay hears on the radio that the storm is now hitting the very beach they're headed to. While Kay is knocking out some school assignments, he gets a call from someone claiming to know him. Kay recognizes the caller's voice and wants nothing to do with him, but the caller insists they'll meet face to face soon. The legendary school principal, Kuwanasuk Naganawa, who once killed a bear with his bare hands, is slowly going mad craving the perfect eggplant. Mickey tasks the students with finding this elusive eggplant, and Kane knows exactly what to do. After Mickey purchases a so-called perfect eggplant, Kay presents his own, which the principal tastes and immediately regains all his energy from eating the vegetable. The principal asks Kay where he got such an eggplant, and Kay explains he grew it himself. He reveals that the eggplants they usually consume are inferior versions of the F1 seed produced by the first filial generation, a multinational known for using chemicals in their crops. The principal decides to send Kay and Kocho abroad for lessons on the effects of chemicals on vegetables when suddenly, Hexatech's president, Minju, Kay's father, walks into the principal's office. Hexa is notorious for its environmentally harmful agrochemicals, and Minju insists the school transfer Kay immediately, mocking the school, which offends Ringo. Kay challenges his father to a competition on who can grow the best vegetable. If Kay wins, his father will vanish from his life forever, if he loses, he'll join him and lead the company. Kay reveals to his friends his hatred for his father stems from the man's greed using dangerous chemicals that ended up killing Kay's mother. The challenge is straightforward, outside a store, they'll set up two vegetable stands, one for Hexa and one for the school, and whoever sells more wins the bet. With Kanagami and the rest of the roundtable's help, the school employs every trick to sell a lot of vegetables, but at the end of the day, Hexa wins, having sold more than Kay. Kay's father explains that despite being a talented farmer, his stubbornness can't match the means and technology of a multinational that uses its research to improve vegetable flavor, proven when the students admit Hex's vegetables taste better. Kay concedes and agrees to leave with his father, but his dad says he doesn't want someone as ignorant as him in charge, challenging him to stay at the school and become a better farmer to prove he's worthy of defeating him. Learning a lesson in humility, Kay agrees to study abroad with Kocho to improve his skills and prove better vegetables can be grown without agrochemicals. As the two friends leave, Kosaku, Ringo, and Minori wave goodbye. With Kay and Kocho abroad, Kosaku, Minori, and Ringo head to Kosaku and Minori's hometown for summer vacation. On the way, Wakadana reappears after a long absence, since Minori sewed a pouch in her dress like a kangaroo's pocket, where the little wallaby sleeps. When they arrive in town, Minori's family welcomes her, convinced she's pregnant because of Wakadana's bulge in her dress. Then Kosaku learns the family has prepared for his and Minori's wedding, believing she's pregnant, and she hasn't corrected them. Kosaku tells the family the truth, putting them in a bind since Minori's sister had developed a town revitalization project based on the idea of it being an ideal place to visit and get married, organizing a matchmaking festival where they are the main attraction. So, if they don't want the project to fail, they must pretend Minori is pregnant, and they plan to marry. While Kosaku agrees, having few options, Ringo struggles with anger in the background. The couple spends the day doing PR, with a jealous Ringo following, and at night, Minori's family arranges for Kosaku and their daughter to sleep together, loving Kosaku and not minding if they actually marry. They spend the night reminiscing about their youth. The next day, Kosaku walks with Ringo, who hears strange rumors about Kosaku planning to flee town. Ringo demands the truth, and Kosaku eventually shares his tragic story. As a child, 
His parents fell in love with farming, moving from the city to the town, but their tomato crops failed, leaving them in debt and abandoning agriculture. His mother's health worsened, and she died, leading his father to leave town forever. Since then, Minori's family has been his only family. That night, the town sends lanterns down the river, and Kosaku and Ringo share a moment of friendship. Kosaku faces a fake wedding for the town's future but decides to drop the rebellion and accept its best for his childhood village. However, during the wedding, it's revealed to the entire town that Minori isn't pregnant but have Wakadana hidden, spoiling the festive mood. The town demands justice, feeling cheated by Minori's family, but Kosaka takes the blame and apologizes. Kosaku's apology speech turns the situation around, and the town welcomes him back. However, when Minori and Ringo ask him to choose between them, he opts for both, earning a punch from each. Everyone returns to school, where Ringo and Minori watch happily as Kosaku is chased by the school's crazy cow. Thus ends this charming series. If you enjoyed this summary, let me know in the comments, and if you have any recommendations, feel free to share. For now, I bid you farewell until next time.